is only war. What is up gents, 40k Dirtbags. So we're gonna do a video for you guys today. We're gonna go over the charge phase slash pile in and consolidate. There's a lot that changed since 10th edition came out. My first video, it was kind of the first thing that I read to see how to get the charge off. And I was a little bit wrong. Uh, a lot of practice games and you know testing and also seeing other uh, videos online. There's a lot of stuff that uh, we could definitely be doing uh, differently. The slingshot effect that we used to do in 9th edition is still kind of gone, but it's still kind of there. We're gonna explain it in this video. So this whole video is gonna be based off of charging, piloting and consolidating tactics, tricks, and also tips that you might have gotten wrong or still getting wrong to hopefully get you better at 10th edition. If you guys are new to the channel, thanks for clicking on the video. We do a lot of these uh, how-to videos and kind of get people better at uh, 10th edition. If you guys are a Patreon, thank you. I uh, wouldn't be doing this without you guys. If you guys want to support us, there's a Patreon dollar a month, five dollars for just the cars. And also if you guys are into the competitive scene, that's kind of what this whole channels about is drinking beers, having fun and being competitive all at the same time. A lot of my dirt bags on Discord know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, if you guys are interested in the competitive scene, there's a $10 competitive uh, Patreon. Uh, you get to message me one-on-one. -on -one. We go over tips, ideas, list building, tactics, any questions you guys possibly have anytime, always ask me up on uh, Discord. Uh, Grandmasters, you guys are phenomenal. Uh, you guys get some pe special perks. Uh, if, there's, if there's any list you guys want to see ran live uh, or at a tournament, I'd be able to run that for you, do some TTS uh, practice, which our boy uh, Archeon on Discord is actually going to be running TTS how-to guide, set it up, some practice games, and we want to get a, a tournament going up on Discord with uh, Archeon. So I appreciate you. Thanks for stepping up and actually helping out with the dirt bags. So in this video, I got it all set up. Hopefully this, this looks good for you guys, but we're going to do a front view. We got top view uh, going, and I got my gray boys, also some uh, stinky death guard. So we're going to be testing out the charge phase and going into that. So let's get into the second camera which is going to be the top view, and then I'll give you some uh, some tips, tactics, and how to how to actually do it. So first, you're going to be the first initial charge. How does the charge actually work, and where can you go after you make your initial charge, and some tips on, uh, on how to get there. All right, so we got the top-down view going. Here's the setup. We have, a set, just, just to give you an example, most of the time you're not going to have objectives this close to each other or units that you know this close, but here's our gray boys. Uh, they're on the objective. We have about 10 paladins, maybe with a grandmaster, whatever, whatever you may be. They could be terminators, but we're going to try and charge into this unit of uh, Death Shroud terminators on this objective. We have a unit of Death Shroud terminators over here, and we have a unit of plague marines with a malignant plague caster in the back there, just to give you an example. So, first off, it is our charge phase. We have to measure to see what our charge distance would be. We are within eight inches meaning that we have a seven inch charge because you have to end within one inch for the engagement range. That's the first thing. So when you roll your dice, you have to be able to put at least one model with an engagement range. So here's an example. Let's roll some dice. We got a five, so that would fail the charge. So we'd have to spend a CP to reroll that. And we got a, oh, this is great. Great for the, great for the video. Let's just pretend we got a seven, cool. So we got a seven, which means we made our charge. Here's a great example. We have to at least get one person in into combat uh, in engage range to successfully make the charge. So we're going to move one of these guys seven inches up to get successfully into the charge. Now the difference is if I would have rolled a 11, we would have to get as many models as we can in base to base uh, while also blocking out if you really want to. So that's going to be right after this, this uh, instance. So we go back to a seven, we got a seven inch charge. We're then gonna move all of our guys where we want to, seven inches as long as we end closer to the charge target. Now, anywhere over here would basically end closer because I'm starting here and the guys I'm charging over there. If I can go this way diagonal, I still technically am ending closer. Now, let's say this unit over here, I didn't pick them as a charge target. I can still attack them in 10th edition. So how it works is I got one successful charge off. Nobody else is within seven inches to get base to base, and I don't have to block off my models yet. So I'm gonna start moving my guys and kind of go 50-50. So I'm gonna go seven inches over to here, staying outside of one inch, because you legally cannot go within one inch on that uh, model. I'm gonna go seven inches over to here onto this objective. I'm still ending closer to this guy. This guy's moving seven inches. This guy's moving seven inches. This guy's moving seven inches. And now all these guys wanna get into combat up here. So they're moving seven inches, seven inches, and seven inches, okay? So that is my charge. Now, you have to then consolidate 
or pile in. If you can get base to base, you have to get base to base. But it's up to three inches. That was the biggest thing that was different. Besides this, I can now put models in this objective uh, to try and steal this objective from the opponent. Um, that was one thing I didn't know. I thought you had to go directly and full distance into the uh, into the the unit that you're charging. So that was one 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 difference. Now with the pile in step, I'm gonna then pile in three inches this way to be base to base because he has to be. This guy is also within three so he has to be base to base so what you could do is you can pile in here base to base and now he physically can't pile in three inches to this guy because this guy's blocking him so he can go three inches this way onto the objective base to base to this guy so he still gets to attack and now he's towing the objective so we got one guy base to base this guy's towing the objective these guys all same thing. He's now closer to, to this model. So he has to go this way compared to this way, the, char the charging target. But he has to go base to base because he's within three inches. And he, and he physically can go base to base. So now this, that makes this guy right here have to go base to base to this guy because he's the closest target. So when he piles in and consolidates, he has to go this way. He can't go this way onto the objective. This guy would be able to. He would be able to pile in this way and get on the objective. But this is OPSEC 3 with my Terminator squad. He's only OPSEC 2. Potentially 1. I'm not sure. So he wouldn't be able to steal this objective from me. So I would be able to have this objective for either secondary points or stopping his primary. So we're going to pile in there. Now this guy's base to base. So this back uh, Terminator could also pile in 3 inches to be base to base of this guy. So he'll also be able to fight. Now let's go over to this squad. Uh, we want to try and get onto this objective to try and steal the objective. So we're, we have to finish off this unit and then pile onto the objective. So this guy who is here, he can physically fit base to base within both these guys and on the objective. So he's going to be within base to base of both these guys and on the objective. Now this guy's within three, he's going to pile in up within three inches and get onto the objective like that. These guys are pretty far out. So now he has to go over here. He's closest to this guy. He can uh, pile in over to here and end closer to this guy. And now he gives me these two guys to also get into in the combat. So you get a lot of movement kind of on the pile in. So they're going to pile in to be base to base. And this guy has to be base to base to this guy because he is uh, within three inches. So we're going to pile in. And you have to stay in coherency. There you go. That is a successful charge. We have coherency within two inches, coherency. All these guys are within coherency. So how the attack's gonna go is I'm gonna put all four attacks, all guys over here into this squad. Everything else is going into this squad. So that is the, a successful charge, pile in, stealing an objective, and potentially killing the squad, moving up three inches and getting onto the objective. So after the fight phase, let's pretend that we killed these three Terminators. We killed this Terminator. And that was it. He still has two Terminators alive over here. Nobody left over here. So now my consolidate move, the first consolidate uh, phase, phrase, is you have to go and end within uh, melee range or base to base of an enemy model. So now since I technically can get base to base and in coherency of this unit and this unit, um, I have to pile in. So this unit is now going to be more onto the objective. So I have to go three inches up base to base. This guy's gonna go three inches up base to base. Now he physically can't go three inches up to base to base that guy. So he's gonna end closer three inches this way to be onto the objective. Same thing with this guy. This guy's gonna move up three inches and to be onto the objective. So now I have one, two, three models on this objective and two guys base to base, so they can't move. Over this squad, I have to pile in and get base to base with this squad. Now they have to uh, essentially attack, or they can attack. So if you really kind of plan this out ahead of time, <laughs> If you backed up here, right now I'm outside of four inches. I'm outside of four inches here. Let's pretend these guys are all outside of four inches. I can't, I can't get into combat with those guys, but I can still pile in and get onto the objective. So I'm piling uh, towards a close enemy target, pile in, pile in, pile in, pile in, pile in, and pile in. So now what I have is everybody's in coherency. It's up to three inches, so I don't have to go into them. And I have one, two, three, four, five, which is 15 
OPSEC on this unit or on this point, and I have one, two, three on this point. So basically, I stole these two points and I was able to kill. Now he gets his attack back. So he gets his attacks back, so might kill you know, this guy or, or this guy that's, that's, that's on the objective right there because then I still have three in coherency. So he'll be able to get his attacks back, but these guys won't be able to attack. So that is one example of the charge, attack, or pile in, attack, and then consolidate, still being able to branch off in, in different stuff. Here's a, a different example of trying to kill people that aren't in a uh, range of you. Okay, here's our big old Terminator brick or Paladin brick. Uh, here's an example of charging in here and trying to get attacks onto this squad in the back here. Okay, and potentially stealing this objective as well. <clears throat> so we're gonna roll, we're gonna pretend we roll high in this one. So let's say we roll a nine. You know, we're, 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 we're a little, little bit above average, we got nine. Now see how we're so close to this enemy unit. We are about, we're within four inches. So we technically only need a three to successfully make that charge. So I'm gonna choose them as a charge target. I then roll a nine. So how we would do this is I'm going to use some of my models to block out my models uh, on this squad. So I'm gonna use this back guy who's gonna move up and get base to base with this guy right here. Next guy is gonna move up and get base to base right here. Now I can't fit a base, a medium base, into base to base with this guy. The space is, the space is too big, all right? So I blocked out basically everything from going this way. Next thing is this guy over here is gonna move up nine inches and go base to base with this guy. So now that leaves me three terminators that are right here in base to base with the units and my other guys aren't physically able to fit their bases around here. So that gives us some opportunities. I can then move nine inches around here so we're gonna go, like I can't physically, this is six, seven, eight, nine. So I wouldn't be able to get base to base going this way. So, that, so that's the example is I can't go six inches this way and then three inches this way. I can't get base to base. So I technically don't have to go that way. I can go anywhere as long as I end closer to that, to that target. So I'm gonna go seven inches this way and then two inches this way, which would be up there. Now I'm about even between this Malignant Playcaster and this Terminator. So he's about even between these two guys. These guys over here, I'm about five inches away, so he's gonna go nine inches up to here and staying within five inches up here, but now I'm closer to Malignant Playcaster. And I'm gonna do the same thing for these other guys. So we're gonna move up nine, move up nine, move up nine, move up nine, and move up nine. So now we all ended closer on this objective and I got some guys that potentially could character snipe uh, the malignant playcaster. So now for the pile-in effect, these guys can't, can't pile in because they're base to base. So these guys are gonna pile in. They don't have to move. This guy can stay exactly where he is. But I can be two inches away. And then this guy can pile in to the malignant playcaster giving me a target to bounce off of. This guy could pile in base to base. This guy could pile in base to base. And then this guy could pile in this way. And then these guys could stay in coherency this way. So we have our guys in coherency. We have this guy on the objective. And now we have potentially three guys into the Malignant Playcaster, or at least our character able to spend one CP to snipe out their uh, Malignant Playcaster. So that's a great example of piling in to your advantage, sling slotting, slotting your, your units around because you blocked off the, uh, the charge lane over here. So they charge in, block off the bases, so now you, can phys you physically can't fit base to base, so you can go around other directions as long as you end closer to the charge target, uh, and then you can steal other objectives. So that's another example of kind of slingshotting around, killing or attacking other units that you didn't get the charge off, uh, or even just tying them up in combat. Let's say it's the end of the game and you really need to get that unit in combat because they can't fall back and do actions, or they can't fall back and shoot, or can't fall back and charge, whatever it may be. But let's say one unit that you have to keep on the table because next turn they'll just get, get teleported off, you want to get them in combat. So you're able to at least get one model in that combat to keep them on that objective, on the table, to stop them from getting secondary points potentially next turn. That's a little kind of slingshot effect going out that way. All right, here's an example of charging a unit and consolidating on your objective. 
If these guys are on this objective, I can try and charge to make sure I don't end within four inches of those guys. So if this Paladin unit charges into this Terminated unit, you know, we get everybody within base to base, base to base, base to base. Everybody else can't fit because of base sizes, right? We charge out to here. We then finish off this unit. So we end our charge. Now, as long as I'm not within four inches of this unit right here, the next phase of the consolidate is the, we kill these guys with our 10 man blob. Now, since I can't pile in the first step is if you have to pile in to the closest enemy unit uh, or consolidate if it's available. So I have to end engagement range, which is one inch. So as long as I'm four inches away from this guy, which I'm outside of four inches, I can't consolidate into that guy, but I can consolidate onto an objective or towards the closest objective as long as I end on that objective. So here's one example. If I can get, so I'm within three inches of this objective and I'm within three inches of this objective. So your guys can now start moving onto objectives. So this guy's gonna consolidate onto the objective here. This guy's gonna consolidate this way towards the center of both. This guy's gonna consolidate towards the center of both. And all these guys are just kind of pile in. Now you don't have to go directly towards, which I was wrong about last time. They can kind of just move up to three inches towards, towards, the closest objective. So we got now two objectives out of that charge. So we charged in, killed the guy, and then piled on to two objectives uh, after that charge phase. So that's a consolidate. The other thing is you can measure that pr uh, beforehand so that way you can try and block off your charges on that charging unit going this way if needed, and then pile on to the objective. So if you accidentally end one of your guys within you know four inches of that model, you now have, you have to pile in uh, up to three inches uh, to get into combat. Specifically says, has to go base to base if possible and or engagement range. So since I'm within four inches, I have to go within engagement range or I could just go, I'm not moving. So that's the two options. You either don't get a consolidate move because you don't wanna be in a uh, consolidate of them, or you have to be in engagement range of that enemy unit, which then they get to pile in and attack you and, and kill you. So in this scenario, I don't wanna be uh, in, that, in that instance because I could potentially go on the objective, but I'm, I'm fearful of them now hitting and fighting me back. Now, if there's only two guys left over here and potentially a malignant playcaster, I kinda of wanna get on that objective. I'm gonna get on the objective, you know, move up, do whatever. And now I'm tying that objective over there. Potentially tying, like I, I don't know the OPSEC, but let's say that's that's three OPSEC, I'm three OPSEC. I then tie that objective, stole that objective, and yeah, they get to attack me, but who the fuck cares because I stole that objective from them. So that's the other option is if you want to get further up or get into combat with another unit to tie them down or steal an objective, you're able to do that as well. And then these guys can still stay on an objective back here. So it's up to three inches. So this guy could stay like one inch up, stay on the objective. Same with this guy. This guy can stay on the objective over here and then all these guys can move up to get into coherency over there. So that's where I was wrong, where I thought you had to move three inches and you had to go towards that enemy unit. But you only have to move that way if you can uh, uh, end within coherency and base to base or um, the, the objective, if there's nobody within four inches of you, you can then move up to three inches onto the objective, towards the objective, not directly towards, but towards the objective, so you can go kind of like slaying it sideways, all that stuff, steal the objectives and everything. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. I try to make it as simple as possible by showing you exactly moving up, charging, pile in, fighting, consolidating. So those are the biggest things that we got difference from the first time we made the video to this time, now starting to understand that you can still shoot out sideways, get an objective and stuff like that. Let's give you one more example. All right, we're going to make this one simple. It's the bottom of four. We're getting into the last turns. I really need to stop his primary, and I need to try and get my secondary points and also a primary for next turn. So we're going into turn, bottom of turn four. It's about to be turn five. I have to try and contest this objective, and I want to try and keep on as many object objectives as possible. So we roll a six for our charge. We are about, we're within six inches, so we need a five to charge. So I rolled a six. What I can do here is I'm going to block off 
this movement over here. So I'm going to get up to here and block off block off this, this movement so all these guys can't get base to base. So we're going to move this guy up. We're going to move this guy over to this objective. We're going to move this guy up to here, this guy up to here, and this guy, let's say we have five guys. So we can stay within two inches of each other. So this guy charges up to there, this guy charges up to there, two inches away. Right to there, two inches away, right to there. And then this guy's going two inches away to there. And then this guy made the charge. Or he ended coherency of that charge. So he's within like half an inch. So he moved up to end to be successfully, let's say, he moved up to be successfully within the charge, blocking everybody else to get base to base. So this guy moves up to here. Try to make sure everybody's in coherency. Kind of like that. So <laughs> this is a broad example, but my charge phase, I then get to pile in base to base to this guy. We got one model on the objective, OPSEC three. These guys are three OPSEC. We got two guys to get fights on. And then we got one, two, three, four, five. So these two guys are objective, and again, most objectives aren't gonna be this close. So you mainly can do it on two objectives. But let's just to give you an example. I charged out this way instead of charging that way because I wanted to make sure I steal this objective, uh, control this objective, and control this objective to get secondary points and do some damage to those. So uh, also we have a banner, so with Grey Knights we can bring a guy back as well. Just just to give you an example. So not the banner, the apothecary. So, uh, at the end of the turn, let's say, I don't know, I kill one guy and they kill one guy. Now you have an opportunity to choose. Do you want to kill whatever gets you the less points? You can kill this guy, you can kill this guy, and then in your command phase, uh, this guy can get brought back, or this guy can get brought back, or this guy on their home field can get brought back. Whatever it may be, whatever gets you the most amount of points, this just gives you an example of what you can do during the charge phase to try and get multiple objectives, multiple scenarios, and multiple like kind of piling and, and stealing stuff. So that's another example of how to use your charge phase to your advantage, kind of like a slingshot, like in 9th edition, but now in 10th edition with updated rules. All right, guys, one of the last examples for Grey Knights, we don't have a lot of uh, anti-tank, especially melee uh, or shooting. So we're gonna try and use the charge phase to our, our, our advantage. So we have this vehicle right here, which is about within six inches. This unit up here is, I need a nine. So I need a nine to charge these guys, and then I need a five to charge this thing. Now I don't wanna fail my charge, but I still wanna be able to attack these guys and try and get on that objective. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna roll off. I'm gonna choose this as my charge target. So we're gonna try and roll off, and I got a five, all right? So this is a kind of a good example. I wish I rolled higher, <laughs> but I can't get within base to base of this guy. None of my guys can get base to base of this guy. So he's gonna move up five inches to here, and all these guys are just gonna start moving five inches up this way, kind of like directly towards. Now, if I rolled like a six or a seven, this, this obviously would have been easier. But here we go, all these guys are moving up. Now in my pile-in phase, this guy's within three inches uh, in, in with this guy. So he piles in three inches to get there. This guy can get base to base. This guy can get base to base. And this guy can get base to base. Now all these guys have to move in. Three inches, three inches, three inches. Now he's not base to base, so he can still pile in. So he's either gonna pile in to tow the objective to try and steal the objective. But in this scenario, we're just gonna try and get closer to that unit up there. Pile in, pile in, pile in, and then pile in. So in this scenario, I used this tank that I'm not really gonna put as many as my attacks into to try and get movement to get up and attack this unit on this back, back objective. So in this scenario, if I rolled a five, I didn't get as many as I wanted. But if I rolled a rolled like a nine, or let's say a, a seven, if I rolled a rolled a seven, that would've got me two more inches, which would've got me 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys onto this unit out of my 10 people. So seven out of 10 would have been able to get onto this uh, unit back here and still be able to attack them. And the reason is because you don't have to choose them as a charge target. As long as in your pile-in step, you can uh, pile into the closest enemy unit. And if you end with an engagement range or base to base, you're able to select that unit as a target. So in this scenario, I was able to steal this objective. So it could be for points, home field objective, whatever it may be. I can potentially kill this unit, which is a lot easier to kill than this fucking vehicle for Grey Knights. And uh, after I kill that unit, I can pile in back this way to try and steal this back objective again if needed. Uh, or just kind of keep on that objective, tie this unit up for one or two more turns, uh, and then go from there. So this is a great example of being able to slingshot across the table a little bit in 10th edition, or go after units that you didn't first charge or choose as a charge target. You're still able to murder another unit and tie a, a tank or a vehicle up uh, in this in this situation. So if you have like a unit of cultists, you don't need a full 10 man blob to kill a unit of cultists. You can throw two or three uh, terminators or paladins in the cultist unit, and then everybody else go into something that you really, really want to go into. As long as you follow those rules. The first rule is you have to end base to base if you can. You can then block off units from getting that charge off to be base to base with your own guys. I just want to switch up. So you can block off the charge with your own guys. So if you have a model here and you're charging into that model, use your base size to block off the rest of your other models to get base to base. Now, it's legally, they can't get base to base, so you can move them really any direction as long as you end closer to that charge model, which it's almost impossible not to. You can't obviously go like diagonal sideways or backwards, but you can go kind of diagonal forward getting on objective or near a closer uh, enemy unit, and then pile in and get that attack on that enemy unit. So that is the biggest thing that I saw um, online with most of these battle reports, and something that I started practicing recently and teaching everybody else uh, around me of how to actually use the charge phase to your advantage. Anytime somebody says you have to do this, or you have to do that, make sure you explain to them and have them pull up the rules and, sh and look at the keywords on have to, need to, must, or, and, or, whatever it may be. But that whole phase of the charge phase, piling phase, and consolidate phase, it's black and white. There's no arguing in between that. Um, so make sure you ask your TOs, make sure you're agreeing with your opponent, uh, have the core rules handy if you had to print it out or get them on a, on a data sheet that you can print out, and make sure that you're explaining to them so that they get better and we can get everybody better at this 10th edition, especially for the charge phase. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. We're gonna do a lot of videos coming up on the channel. Uh, I have actually have a list here. Uh, list building ideas for 10th edition. That's for any list that you guys are trying to build. Movement phase for Grey Knights, that's gonna be a fun one. Movement phase for tactics, that's this one. Best Chaos Space Marine units, uh, points versus value. Uh, ally units fill the gaps with points. Best Grey Knight allies, Cypher versus Caldus. Caldus strats and best strats for minus one CP. Grey Knights versus armor, that's gonna be also another fun one with a friendly face. And the charge phase, new strats. So everything that I could possibly do to help you guys out, all these videos go up on Patreon first, uh, so that way those guys get to see it ahead of time and then next it goes to YouTube. So if you guys wanna help support the channel, definitely head over to Patreon. If you guys are interested in the Dirtbag Dice, we are selling them uh, at discount up on uh, Discord. So uh, everything that we threw out to our Patreons, uh, we just shipped out today. So you guys should be getting them in the mail. If not, you already got them. So I appreciate it. Good luck, guys. And we'll see you in another video soon.